Hello team, Mr. Borsch here with bet with more on L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so we're going to go ahead now. I want you to try this problem on your own. Take the limit x goes to 0 of e to the x minus x minus 1 over cosine x minus 1. Go ahead and just take 30 seconds, pause the video, uh, and try this problem using what you've done. Okay, so uh, first off, you did the top, you did the bottom, hopefully, obviously. So you use L'Hopital's rule, right? We're, we're a good little boy, we see our girl. Our girl. We'll take a look at the fraction. Limit x goes to 0 of e to the x minus x minus 1. You get e to 0 minus 1, which is 0. On the bottom, you take the limit x goes to 0, and you get uh, cosine 0 minus 1, which is also 0. Great. And then you went ahead and used L'Hopital's rule. So this is equal to the limit x goes to 0 up. Derivative on top is e to the x. Derivative of x is 1. Uh, derivative on bottom is negative sine of x. But at this point, you may have gotten a little fuzzy feeling because look what happens here. You got the top and you got the bottom. And when you take that top limit, that limit here is just equal to e to the 0 minus 1, which is 0. If you take that bottom, you do the limit x goes 0, negative sine of x, which is still 0. What do we do? Oh my gosh, did someone call 911? Because I think we have to go to L'Hopital again. OMG, very exciting. So we're going to do L'Hopital's rule a second time on this little dude right here. Okay, so as we do that, uh, we're going to get into, okay, so the derivative on top uh, is going to be, of course, is e to the x minus 0. Derivative on bottom will just be negative cosine x. And now you'll see, okay, well, if I just plug in, I just have e to the 0 over negative cosine 0, which is 1 over minus 1, which is negative 1. Okay, so that's how you would address these problems and, and approach them. So you might have to do L'Hopital's rule more than once. You might have to do it twice. If you're really lucky, I might even let you do it three times. So let's go ahead and look at a few other examples here uh, where we might have to use L'Hopital's rule multiple times. So let's say we go ahead and take a limit x goes to infinity of 8x cubed plus 7x plus 1 over 3x cubed minus x minus 4. Okay, now, if you remember back from the start of the semester, you should know, okay, same power on top and bottom going to infinity, it's going to be 8 thirds. But let me show you, you can get that same result um, using L'Hopital's rule if you forgot that method. So you can just say, okay, if we take a limit there, x goes to infinity of 8x cubed plus 7x plus 1, it should be abundantly obvious that's infinite. And the same with the bottom, right? You got a 3x cubed minus x minus 4. Obviously, infinity cubed bigger than infinity is infinity. Okay, so you do L'Hopital's rule. So that's the limit x goes to infinity on top. You have 24x squared plus 7. On bottom, you have a 9x squared minus 1. So here again, when you take a limit as of, of the top and the bottom, when you take the limit as x goes to infinity of 24x squared plus 7, that's clearly infinity. When you take a limit on the bottom of 9x squared minus 1, also infinity minus 1, still infinity. Okay, so when you do L'Hopital's rule again, now we see we get a limit x goes to infinity of 48x uh, divided by 18x. So the x is canceled, you just get 48 over 18, so that's like 24 over 9, take out a 3, which is 8 thirds. So Obviously, this is more work to use L'Hopital's rule in this case, but it does give the answer we would expect. Okay, now, same thing here. Uh, if you take, for example, the limit x goes to infinity of e to the x minus 2 over x squared. And feel free to pause this, give it a try on your own if you'd like. Um, this is going to show us a very powerful result. So if you take a limit of the top and the bottom, so the limit on top is e to the x minus 2, of course, is e to the infinity minus 2, which is still infinite. If you take a limit on bottom there of x squared, also infinity squared is infinite. So use L'Hopital's rule. So when you end up here, you've got a limit x goes to infinity um, of e to the x over 2x. So of course, each of those limits, it's always good to write it out just to make sure. Um, the top is infinity and the bottom is infinity as well. That's 2 times infinity. So we're going to use L'Hopital again. So this will give us the limit x goes infinity of e to the x over 2, which is infinity over 2, which is still infinite. Now, what this shows us is that e to the x over any polynomial is always going to be infinite. Because no matter what happens, when you keep taking derivatives on top, you're still going to get e to the x. But eventually, the bottom is going to go off to 0. 
or it's going to go to some constant uh, more accurately. So eventually, you're going to get to a point where you have infinity over constant, which is going to be infinite. So e to the x over any polynomial as you go to infinity um, is equal to infinity. Now, the cool thing about that, of course, it shows you as, as you get to large numbers, e to the x is always bigger than the polynomial, which well, is kind of cool. Anyway, so that's just an example. Let me show you two more uh, that are a little bit hairy. So let's say we take a limit x goes to infinity. This was an AP question a couple years ago. Uh, natural log of x cubed plus 4 divided by 2x. Okay, so we do the top, we do the bottom. The top here, we take a limit x goes to infinity of natural log of x cubed plus 4. So we're going to get ln of infinity, which is infinite. Um, right, e to the infinite power is still infinity, so that's how that works. On the bottom, if you take a limit x goes to infinity of 2x, you're just going to get 2 times infinity, which is, of course, still infinity. Now, L'Hopital's rule is going to work out kind of interesting here. So we checked, and again, you're always checking the top and the bottom to make sure you can use L'Hopital. When we do L'Hopital's rule, uh, we're going to get limit x goes to infinity of... Okay, so we got to use the, uh, the chain rule on top. So derivative of ln is 1 over x cubed plus 4 times derivative on top, which is 3x squared. So we're just doing chain rule, the derivative of the bottom, divided by the derivative of 2x, which is 2. So what I would tell you now is try and simplify this first. So turn this into a limit x goes to infinity of 3x squared over x cubed plus 4 over 2 which is the same as just putting the two on bottom, right? You could put the two over one and then flip it if you want, but it's just a limit x goes to infinity of three x squared over two times x cubed plus four, uh, also known, of course, as three x squared over two x cubed plus eight. Now, if you look at that polynomial, polynomial, it's gotta be a zero with bigger power on bottom, that's fine. But you could also use L'Hopital here, right? So if you take a limit x goes to infinity of 3x squared, that's infinity. If you take a limit x goes to infinity of 2x cubed plus 8, of course, that's also infinity. So you'll L'Hopital this bad boy. So this is going to be a limit x goes to infinity of 6x, taking the derivative of this, 6x over 6x squared. Um, so the anyway, the 6 is canceled, the x is canceled, it's just 1 over x, which is 0. Okay, so that one worked out to be zero in this case with the natural log. Just make sure that you try and like combine the fractions into one. Um, that just makes your life easier on this type of problem. Okay, well I hear people saying, Boris, derivatives and limits together, incredibly fun. What if we could bring limits, derivatives, and integrals together into one problem? Terrific. That would really make this trip to the hospital worth it. So let's find the limit as x goes to one of integral one to x of square root of t squared plus 3 dt. Okay. So, let's go ahead and do this. So, so again, you see a limit, and, and this kind of problem should really set off some kind of alarm bell in your head, really. Uh, we have a weird limit, so let's just start by doing the top and the bottom separately. So, we take a limit x goes to 1 of integral 1 to x of rad t squared plus 3. Now, when you take a limit x goes to 1, you just plug in the x is 1, nothing with the t. So this just becomes integral 1 to 1 of root t squared plus 3. Now all the cool kids know the integral 1 to 1 of anything is 0, right? If you have the same bound on top and bottom, the limit is 0. On the bottom, if you take limit x goes to 1 of x cubed minus 1, you get 1 minus 1, which is also 0. So let's use L'Hopital's rule. Now, with L'Hopital's rule, as we go ahead and say, let's take a limit x goes to 1, well, the derivative on top, so if you take the derivative... So my top derivative, if you take the derivative integral one to x of root t squared plus three, what's going on here? Well, the derivative and the integral cancel, right? Um, the x in your bounds, the derivative and the integral cancel, so we're just left with a root x squared plus three. The derivative and integral cancel, you plug in the x. On the bottom, of course, the derivative on bottom there is just three x squared. And now you're free to plug in. Um, so when you just plug in the one here, we just get square root of four over three times one, which is two thirds. Okay, so notice how you're still using L'Hopital's rule. Um, the only trick here was that you, you had to find, to find the derivative of the top, we had to use the fundamental theorem to cancel the top and the bottom, but we're still using L'Hopital's by finding the top and bottom limits separately. Okay, um, so that's our good friend L'Hopital. I hope you guys have enjoyed this lesson. I think it's a pretty cool trick, uh, and I'll see you guys in class. Thanks.